All right, what am I kicking off with this morning? Well, boy, what a reaction to what I thought was in danger of being a rave yesterday because I was so outraged by what I'd read, but I was heartened in the past 24 hours to see that so many of you share my outrage at the document I highlighted, Te Tariti Framework for News Media, published by none other than New Zealand On Air, the organisation, government organisation, that doles out more than $100 million in taxpayer funds every year for works of journalism, uh, art, culture, um, and, of course, was responsible, and it's in its final round now, for the Public Interest Journalism Fund, a separate fund of $55 million, supposedly to keep our news media organisations, our mainstream legacy media afloat, largely used, it would seem to me, to propagandise on behalf of the incumbent government. But the document I outlined yesterday, written by um, and commissioned by New Zealand on Air, that is most important, and written by a bunch of pearl-clutching academics from Massey and Auckland universities, uh, that document didn't just contend, it asserted, it assumed... In, in its instructions and suggestions for mainstream news media in New Zealand, that Māori never ceded sovereignty, that we are inherently a racist country, that news organisations must work towards more equity through a separate system of governance um, for Māori, literally, or a separate government for Māori. And I made the comment that I thought... This remarkable uh, taxpayer-funded document, uh, but which, by the way, uh, New Zealand on Air would not comment on, and no one officially is prepared to comment on, this document um, laid out the basis for the sort of ethno-state, ethno-state that ACT leader David Seymour has been warning us about. And once the folk had acted, had a look at the document yesterday, um, it was relatively easy to secure our first guest for this morning, Act leader David Seymour, who joins us uh, by video link now. David, uh, welcome. Nice to have you with us. Yeah, nice to see you, Sean. Happy New Year, and I uh, hope everyone's having a good start to 2023. Well, we are. We're ripping into it. Um, what do you think of Tatariti framework for news media? Uh, well, a few things. Uh, first of all, it's a document that is, by any stretch of the imagination, racist. It's a document that says that if you are a media organisation, uh, then you must treat a group of New Zealanders differently based on who their ancestors were. Now, that is old-fashioned racism now uh, described as somehow virtuous. Uh, the second point I'd make is that it's a level, regardless of the content, uh, it's a level of state interference uh, in the media that is totally un unacceptable in a free society. So it begins, mass news media organisations need, need to consider, explore, build on and implement this framework in ways that show commitment to. Now it finishes by saying te tiriti o waitangi, but um, it could say anything after that mm. uh, and it would be wrong to have a government department saying this is what mass media organisations uh, need to do. Um, and I just, one more objection, that it, it, the whole point of this activity uh, is that we end up looking backwards. So it requires media organisations to have a person who leads the work to connect with mana whenua in the rohi or the area where the uh, mass media organisation operates. It's a whole lot of time spent on the idea that what determines our future is things that we can't change that happen a lot. Well, we are ago. a systemically and racist post-colonial country, according to this document, aren't we, David? Well, according to this document. But if you believe that, you won't go anywhere because you will spend your whole time, instead of asking, how do we make the world a better place? How can my actions today deliver a better tomorrow? You spend all of your time focusing on the past. And that kind of determinism uh, is, what, is something that leads to depression, frankly. Uh, so, look, it's, it, it, it's racist. Uh, it's controlling of a free press. 
uh, and it's backward looking and time wasting and depressing uh, is how I'd describe it. Mm. It is clearly though, um, and boy have, uh, I think we've been gaslighted on this, it is clear that you don't get PIJF funding and in fact you don't get New Zealand on air um, scripted and factual programming funding unless you sign a document that says I'm going to adhere and, and my company's going to adhere to the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi, as one presumes laid out in this document, that interpretation well, of the Treaty of Waitangi. So these are the rules well, for getting taxpayer subsidies. Well, I think that's unquestionably the case. Um, if you, you know, read this document, uh, or if you were applying for funding for news from New Zealand on air, I think you would be incredibly stupid to think that they'd publish this document for no reason. You would have to assume that if you're not playing the game as per these requirements to go through this whole process um, of showing your commitment to Te Riti o Waitangi, uh, then you're not going anywhere. I'm, I'm sure it's that simple. Um, and uh, as a result, they've politicised what has been in the past uh, a relatively good institution that doles out money for New Zealand arts and culture uh, in an apolitical way. But I'll just tell you something else. I was thinking about, well, where does this come from and what would we do differently? And if you look at uh, Chris Farfoy, the former broadcasting minister's letter of expectations, uh, to the Commission uh, back in 2022-2023, uh, he says, uh, the, uh, I'd like to emphasise four enduring expectations in particular, ensuring no surprises, okay, supporting future-focused Māori Crown relations, including supporting the Mahi Kaurauna uh, and pursuing further opportunities for partnership with Māori entities and businesses, Point three is ensuring your workplaces and leadership are diverse and inclusive. And point four is taking act active steps to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Those are the four things uh, that uh, the letter of expectations from the Minister of Broadcasting has asked them to emphasise. So it's pretty simple. The next government needs to ensure that anyone on the board who thinks this was a good idea is no longer on the board and a letter of expectations is sent to New Zealand on air uh, that the expectation is to promote a modern, multi-ethnic, liberal democratic society uh, by awarding funding to the, the best applicants, not, not, by, not by trying to socially engineer New Zealand. All right. This, would you regard this framework for news media as an official document, as an iteration of the current government's policies and intentions? Well, the document says that it's a Tariti framework for news media that was commissioned by New Zealand On Air uh, and it's in the public domain. So I don't see how you can view it as anything other than an um, official document. Uh, if, if they have lied and it wasn't commissioned by um, New Zealand <laughs> well, On Air... Well, it's on their website. Or, One can presume we've, we've got that right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, assuming they haven't been hacked, then, you know. Yeah. New Zealand On Air refuses uh, point blank to talk with us about this. Its chief executive says, oh, it's an independent report. That's their excuse for not getting into this. Yeah, well, as you say, they've uh, published it and put it on their website. And I guess the question is, um, you know, does the minister agree with it? And if not, what are they going to do about it? If they do agree with it, then I think that tells us everything we need to know. This government definitely needs to go. You're going to ask some questions about it? Uh, I think it's pretty likely. I mean, luckily for most of New Zealand, Parliament doesn't go back till the middle of February. Um, but uh, I, I can see us asking questions about this, sure. And, and along with everything else that will no doubt come up yeah. in the next month. I've got to say the, the reaction, the other, I guess, David, negative thing about this is this document does nothing to reduce division, to reduce heat in the discussions around the issue of race in New Zealand, and it is an issue uh, in New Zealand. A document like this is a red rag to a bull, not just to Pākehā or what are defined in it as Pākehā New Zealanders, 
but I think New Zealanders across the board. Well, I think it, it's it's worse than that. It it will do enormous damage to the credibility of media uh, because people will assume, rightly or wrongly, that this makes journalists uh, corrupted and maybe dishonest because they have this other agenda. They have to. Um, they it have just to, makes them woke, uh, doesn't it? David? Advance. Yep. Yep. And so, as a result. Uh, you know, this will damage, even, even if it's, even if the media do actually hold the line and resist this, and who knows, let's hope that some of them Well, do. they haven't. They've taken uh, the money already. Well, you certainly haven't seen any criticism in any other platform, have you? No. Um, but regardless, it is going to create the perception that the media uh, are undermined and corrupted and untrustworthy. And, and that is perhaps more corrosive than anything. It's, it's a hugely damaging document. It's unbelievably stupid. Mm. Also, I guess the fact that it could have been commissioned, submitted, approved and published, and this was back in March of last year, um, without really so much as a ripple on the sea of public opinion or in the media would indicate to me, and I've had a number of, of people I know in the last 24 hours say to me, the problem is this isn't the only document, official document in a government department or a quango or a crown-owned entity that makes and assumes certain, well, facts, attitudes about race relations and the Treaty of Waitangi in New Zealand that to the average New Zealander is radical and runs completely against their idea of, uh, of what the democracy they live in is. A number of people have said to me, yeah, but in Wellington and the public service, this doesn't raise anyone's eyebrow. This is the new normal inside the political beltway. That indicates to me that attitudes like this, separatist, negative attitudes like this that divide people, are pretty well entrenched inside our bureaucracy. I don't think there's any question of that. I think that there are uh, a group of people in New Zealand, mainly in the Wellington Beltway, who over the last 40 years have grown up this system of belief. Um, and it's, you know, it's not... Um, widespread. It's not Maori that believe this and, and Pākehā that don't. It's a group of elites, mainly in Wellington, uh, who have come to the conclusion that the treaty divides us into, um, it, you know, two types of people, Tangata Tiriti, treaty people, who are here because of the treaty, and Tangata Whenua, land people, who have a a, a genuine right to be here. And you see that uh, at Starship, there's now going to be two nursing directors, uh, a Tangata Tiriti nursing director and a Tangata Whenua nursing director. So, yeah, it's absolutely pervasive. And this is why ACT says we need to have a referendum on co-governance. We need to be able to debate this issue at a national level and the people who really believe the treaty was, you know, the first treaty in the world designed to actually divide people instead of bring them together, uh, need to actually come out and explain uh, why they think this is the case. Because if they don't, they'll get trounced at the uh, referendum. Uh, and if they do, well, I suspect they'll get trounced at the referendum. But the point is, right now, there's no open debate. And as you say, documents and thinking like this are pervasive within the power structures of New Zealand, uh, but they are not openly debated and most people would be shocked and would disagree violently if they were exposed to the kind of thinking that is being advanced here. Well, a lot of people, thousands, uh, since uh, we hired the, this yesterday, are shocked and are dismayed. Do you think this document should be withdrawn, taken down off the website now? And I note, by the way, we talked about an issue with this, what was it, the... Uh, Maori uh, genetically superior stuff on the uh, Maori Party website. They did eventually take that down because we checked it day after day after day. Just before <laughs> Christmas, that quietly was removed uh, from their website. So it, it took a while. Should this be removed from a government website? Should New Zealand On Air come out publicly and say, we recognise that the views and the claims made in this document previously published by us are not acceptable to New Zealanders and we withdraw the framework instructions for news media? 
Well, of course they should. Um, I think it's very unlikely that they would. You'd, you'd have to assume that the minister uh, is aware of this and that the minister has um, probably given some endorsement of it. So um, hard to imagine that Willie Jackson uh, is, is going to support them taking it down. Hard to imagine the board that put it up would take it down. And that's why we need real change. Uh, we need to, to champion a modern, multi-ethnic, liberal democracy. We need to say to these guys, it's not acceptable. If you don't want to be on the board, that's fine, but you can't do it this way. And by the way, the next minister needs to send a letter of expectations to New Zealand on air that says, actually, you know, we're a modern, multi-ethnic, liberal democracy. You've got to find a place for all and you've got to stop pushing political agendas. Uh, and by the way, that's not how the treaty works. Uh, if we if we don't do that, then we are going to be in some real trouble. Uh, maybe we already are. David, thank you for joining us. I just want to ask, are you guys doing a caucus retreat in Napier this weekend? The big boys are. <laughs> no, it was weird. We thought about it, but everything was booked out. I, I don't know what's going on. It must be a busy weekend. In Napier. Uh, are you planning no, a caucus retreat or, or, or not? Oh, yeah, no, we will, but um, ours is in a couple of weeks. Um, you know, I worry about Labor and National. Their MPs are liable to forget everything by the time Parliament comes back. All right, I worry that Labor won't be able to afford it because no-one's giving them any money, according to uh, the front page of the Don Post, according to Stuff Today. David uh, Seymour, leader of the ACT Party, nice to talk to you again uh, at the start of election year 2023, and thank you for uh, coming on this morning. That is David Seymour, leader of the ACT Party. And, yep, he says this document should be uh, withdrawn. We'll try Willie again today, during the day today, I think, Ben, um, the Minister of Broadcasting. Uh, and what David Seymour was saying, probably in more reasonable terms than many of the hundreds and hundreds of you who have corresponded with me on this issue, uh, don't forget, you can go to our Facebook page, go to the app, to the platform app. You can listen... Um, as I outline the document, and we've got a link there to go to the document itself and read it. And I can I just recommend that every New Zealander, every New Zealander realise this. The other point I think that David made, documents like this, full of outrageous, divisive, and factually incorrect statements, they sprout, I don't know, they sprout like weeds in the bureaucracy in Wellington. This is the world that our bureaucrats and some of our politicians and our judiciary live in. A woke world completely, completely separated and unrelated to the real world that the average taxpaying New Zealander lives in, working New Zealander lives in. Um, and that's really the point. Um, and I think David Seymour sometimes doesn't get angry enough um, over the rubbish that is uh, going on in this country.